Hello and welcome. So I wanted to do a video on what I learned trying to build my own stator for a brushless motor that goes into my own robotic actuator, which for anyone new to the channel is for my powered armored exoskeleton project like the one you can see behind me. Now one of the main parameters of me doing this is basically that I'm doing it with very minimal tooling. So I decided to make two different types of stator, one being an SMC stator, which is soft magnetic composite. This is typically iron powder mixed with silicon and bound together with some form of resin, typically epoxy. And I also ended up using the regular type of stator, which is a silicon steel stator, which is built up of many sheets of silicon steel cut to shape. Now I will say before we get into it that my stator design isn't perfect by any means and that's something I'm going to be refining in the future but I really need to work out how I could build these effectively with again so little tooling. So the SMC stator cores were made with 3D printed moulds whereas the silicon steel stator I did have to actually cut on my own 3-axis CNC router that if anything is more hobby grade. So we'll just go on into CAD and look at some of the designs that I trialled and then we'll get on to what I found actually trying to make them. So we'll start off with the first SMC stator design, which actually turned out to be the neatest purely because there was less slots involved, therefore making each slot bigger and therefore easier. Now, I always assume whenever doing any sort of mould, it's always going to be a pain to actually get the thing you've moulded out of the mould. So I wanted to make it a multiple, multiple split cast so I could basically break off each piece if necessary. So the stator itself would actually be a part of this 3D printed ring here and each of these little prongs basically acted as a rebar in between the iron powder. I wanted something to reinforce each slot because at this point I really didn't know how strong this SMC would be on its own, especially with me making it. The idea of this was that this piece would then sit on this base here, which has the lip going outside so it can be easily knocked off. You then have this centre piece which attaches into the middle here, that then creates the hole in the middle of the stator if you will. And then all of these little pieces at the side basically go around each of these little fittings here and that creates each slot in itself. And then you've got a cover which they're then bolted over the top of it using the bolt holes for the stator to make sure it's all clamped down and pressed together. This is a 15 slot stator. And I did design an 18 slot stator, which is actually easier for me to show the idea of this. So you can see here, you've got the centerpiece and then you've got each one of these individual pieces. This is after making the 15 slot stator. So I did decide to go without the rebar on this one, as I thought this would probably be strong enough. So you've just got this outside surround here, the rest of it fitting in the same. I then also designed some other stators that would have much more slots. The reason why I want more slots is because it's less cogging, which because I want it as a robotic actuator, even though there is a gearbox attached to this, the smaller the incremental movement, the better. So this is a 30 slot stator. I did go slightly different on this one. So on this one, you've still got the outer ring here. And then you've got all of these little prongs that then fit through these holes to create the complete mold for the stator. However, I did realise that trying to actually slot these in perfectly straight was an absolute nightmare. So on this version, I did also create this ring here. Again, 3D printed that just slotted up the bottom of that piece there. The next and final SMC stator that I decided to make was a 27 slot stator. So nine slots per phase. But this one I actually wanted to try a different thing, so I wanted to try really thin 3D printed walls that would actually stay as part of the stator as basically the insulating layer between the enameled wire and the actual stator material. The only issue with this is you've got to really make sure that you're forcing all of that soft magnetic composite into all of these little gaps so that you've got no air bubbles and I'll also have to cut away these parts here just to make sure there's actually enough gap to put the wire through the sides and to make sure the tolerance is low enough for the end of the slot relating to the magnetic rotor. I then proceeded to get all of these stator moulds printed out, starting off with the 15 slot stator. I'm not going to lie, it's quite a complicated little mould, but again I wanted to make sure that it actually come apart, so at this point I did proceed to clean it all up, and then make sure that I got as much release agent on as possible, of which I prefer using wax as you can physically see where you've coated and where not. As for which soft magnetic composite I decided to go with, I basically went with the easiest to get hold of, which is iron and silicon powder with an epoxy resin. 
From my research, there are many different types, typically ones with different resin to allow for a higher temperature. However, I know how epoxy behaves and the rest of the materials are easy to get. The only thing I had to bear in mind is when it came to finding the iron and silicon powder, I couldn't find it in the right percentage amount. So from my research, this powder typically needs to be around 95% iron powder with 5% silicon. I could only find powders that had about 85% iron and 15% silicon, so I did have to buy some pure iron powder and then basically mix it together to get to that 5%. The amount of resin needed seemed to be about 10 to 20%, but I really just tried to do that by feel and use kind of the bare minimum resin as I knew if anything I'd end up using too much. But because the iron powder is not exactly absorbing the resin, that was actually quite easy to work out as you basically knew you had enough resin once the paste became workable. It was then just a case of pressing the iron paste into all of the gaps, starting off with the corners to make sure there were no air bubbles and doing it until it basically overflowed. Then when it was dry, I just ground off the excess over the top to get it ready for demolding. Now, the top and bottom came off really easily and so did the center. However, there was some finesse going on to make sure I got these little pieces out just to make sure I didn't break any of the slots. It did, however, turn out, especially because I put those little rebar prongs in, the SMC did actually turn out to be quite stronger than I thought it would be. However, I still took precaution, basically used this socket set up in the vise and then basically knocked it through with a punch and a hammer very, very carefully. And yes, you are correct, this took way too long. There's certainly refinement needed in the manufacturing, but at least it did work. Well, call me a factory in Wuhan. <coughs> Looks like it as well. Now, to be honest, I was pretty pleased with how this turned out for the first go. There were no major chip-offs or anything like that, and no real major pinholes or air bubbles. There was just one little one around there, and that was it. Something that is good about these, because they are made from iron powder and resin, is the edges are really easy to file down. So any sharp edges that I thought the enameled wire might rub through, I was able to file down, and then just clear coat over the top of it so it was ready for the enameled wire being wound around it. Which, over the course of making these stators and trialing different things, I tried multiple different wire thicknesses. This one, I tried 0.8 millimeter thick wire, which worked well because I could get a sufficient amount of turns around each slot, and because of the gaps, I was able to do four layers of wire on each slot. Also, while like an idiot, I didn't record it, before I wound the full set on, I did just wind one and then connect it up to a power supply to make sure it did actually work as an electromagnet, and I can confirm it does actually work. I then proceeded to make the rest of the state designs while becoming a member of the iron hands in the process. I did during this time decide that 27 slots was the maximum that I wanted to do at this side, as 30 was getting far too fiddly and unreliable. Although doing at 27 with those 3D printed walls did seem to do pretty well, the printed walls were only 0.8 millimeters thick, which when you consider a lot of stators are basically dipped in some form of gel coat resin to insulate them to make sure that the animal wire doesn't rub through, this did seem like a good option. At this point with this many slots though, I did go down to 0.5 millimeter wire, that's because I could just get more turns per slot, which got me the correct resistance I needed for the phases. The only slight problem I had with this one is I did have a few little air bubbles that I found when I removed part of that 3D printed mould where the rotor will sit in the centre. But other than that, I was quite pleased with how it went. So it's time to move on and go on to the design for the silicon steel stator, of which we'll begin in Fusion 360 and talk about certain things that I needed to do to make sure that I could machine it correctly. As for making the silicon steel stator with my own CNC, I decided to go for a three millimeter end mill. I thought if I go any smaller, it'll be too small, probably gonna break. Whereas three mil is not a bad size. However, this did dictate how wide the feet of the slots could be because I needed at least three mil, if not 3.5 mil to pass through the gap. And I also needed a radius that matched that three millimeters as well. So I couldn't really have any abrupt stops. This one is the full width of the casing, which is what I actually should have continued to do. The problem is with this is the width is about 105 millimeters. So with the three millimeter end mill, you're gonna be looking at realistically at least 115, 120 millimeters wide in the material that they need for each one. The problem is the silicon sheets that I could buy were 300 by 300 millimeters. So if I did it like this, I'd only get four per sheet. So I did decide to make some smaller ones that basically cut off the ends uh, so I could 3D print a casing for these to sit in. 
that would then allow these to be smaller, which would allow me to get nine per sheet. Just like this. However, this was really a mistake because these turned out to be an absolute pain to basically get to fit together into that 3D printed casing. So I do wish I'd have just bought more material. But never mind. That is the type of thing and lesson that I've learned. So you can see here by the tool paths, I've got just enough room to fit in between them. I also needed the slot feet to be quite deep just so they didn't kind of vibrate or end up chipping off a little bit. As for machine settings for these, I went very slow at 80 millimeters a minute. Mine is just a router head, so it's literally a Makita router, so it doesn't spin at any high speeds, so you can't really go that fast. It's also on belts and not screws, so you can't hit anything hard because the belts just skip. So unfortunately, I have just got to go really slow for that. But as you will see, they still came out all right, and it went surprisingly well. To give myself the best chance of success, I did attach the silicon steel sheet to a separate board just to make sure it was as level as possible. And then one of my biggest concerns was cooling and basically stopping as much sparking as possible. So I did decide to put as much cutting paste as I could basically fit on top of the sheet and then douse it in ATF oil. ATF oil is the best thing I found that's basically cheap and easily accessible that doesn't really create much mess. I've tried various different oils. Some are expensive and work really well. Some kind of just run off. ATF oil is the best one I've found. And I did find as long as the tungsten carbide bit was good and there was a good layer of this mixture on top, I didn't get any sparks coming off the board. This was, of course, as you can imagine, quite a long process. This is why I was hoping to get them laser cut at one point. But some time and three end mills later, I did have them all cut out. I then deburred and cleaned these up. And then because the silicon steel isn't laminated, I then did just clear coat a layer over the top to act as a lamination, which would certainly be good enough for this prototype. I then got all of these stator pieces clamped together, ready for an insulating layer of gel coat. This is when I realised I'd made a mistake not just buying more material as this was incredibly fiddly. But with that lesson learned, I just used some gel coat that I already had and brushed it on over the stator to make sure that the enamelled wire wasn't going to rub through. In the future, I want to get a thinner gel coat so I can literally just dip it in and out. But this did the job for now. It was then time to get winding. It was then time to get winding with the 0.5mm wire, doing two layers on each slot. I will just note something that does make the winding harder is the fact this is an in-runner motor, but the reason why it's an in-runner motor is because it's been attached to a planetary gearbox where the sun gear is the input. For me to make it an outrunner motor, there'd have to be a couple more manufacturing steps to basically make the rotor. So if I can get it to work with the in-runner, that will be much easier from the manufacturing point of view, even if it does make it slightly harder to wind. Now I'd completed the trials of actually trying to make my own stators, I was then able to fit them into my own actuator design so I could have a complete 3D printed prototype to see how it all fit together. So you may be wondering after I've made all these stators why I'm showing this actuator working yet and well to be honest that's because it doesn't work yet. It's most likely for a couple of reasons why it doesn't work. One of the reasons is I'm just trying to get it to work with a regular brushless motor ESC which have to calibrate each time you turn them on and they rely on this calibration working by getting a back EMF signal to work out the positions of the phasers, which I don't think is matching up on these stators that I've built. This is most likely down to my imperfect design. So there's two ways to get it working. One is go back in and basically try and make a stator that will match this EMF with some actual design software, which is something I'm gonna be doing. And the other way is to use a diametric magnet on the back of the motor with a Hall effect sensor and basically create a censored ESC, which I'm actually also going to do because I need the position anyway for it to work as a robotic actuator. However, I wanted to be able to put everything that I learned into a video of which I hope was informative for you. However, it is quite hard to actually get all of this into a short-ish 15 minute video. Hence why I'm doing it now. The next actuator video I'll be doing, which is probably in a week or so, is to basically make the gearbox that's in this out of composite material so it will be a mix of plastic and carbon fiber to make a stronger gear set than 3d printed i was hoping to do them out of steel at one point but actually getting laser cutters and machinists to do it accurately and on time is just too much hassle and starts to get too expensive but i do have a way around this that will also give me an opportunity to make one of these actuators where basically if i can't get my own brushless motor to work I will be able to fit a brush of motor to the back of the gearbox and still have an actuator. However, I really, really, really do want to get this to work with my own brush of motor from scratch. One, to kind of prove that I can do it, but mainly to bring down the cost and 
have it all my design so it lines up better and works better on my exoskeleton and on a robot I intend to do in the future. So if this interests you and you are new to the channel, please feel free to like and subscribe. There are more updates on that, some other projects, as well as, of course, actuator videos in the future. So that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you have a great day.